So are you just mainly talking in that one? I don't know. We'll see where we go from here. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know either. (laughs) (laughs) William Montgomery, live here in the flesh. So nice to be here. Normally, I'm not up this early. I know. Super early. Super early. What is it? 1.30? 1.30. Yeah. Super early. Super early. What time do you usually wake up, William? Uh, 4.35. 4.35? Yep. That's a highway in Kansas City. What, also the 4.35? Runs, yeah, you probably are familiar with it. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. the country. Yeah, the 4.35. I grew up next to the I-40. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I-70 is another big highway. I think it was across Colorado. <laughs> yeah. How'd you do that noise? <laughs> That's actually through my teeth. How do you do that? <laughs> um, it's like um, it's like pushing your tongue and then air through the cracks of your teeth in the front. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do. <laughs> if you just did it right now, I'd be actually really, really impressed. I can't, dude. You're doing it. It's a hard one to do. The la- so we were talking before the podcast started. The last show we did for stand up was together in Huntington Beach. Yes, middle of March. Middle of March, and uh, I was talking with with Gage behind the glass before the show. How is he? He looks real sickly today. Is he all right? <laughs> That's just how Gage looks. I mean, he's he, he looks healthy in my opinion, but like I don't know. I don't. Maybe we have a different Gage. Let me see a thumbs up. Are you doing okay? Okay. <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> That's William's give me COVID a thumb test. Up. <laughs> That's William's COVID test of you. Like, are you good? <laughs> give me a thumbs up, dude. Thumbs up. Thumbs Any symptoms? Up. No. Cool. Cool, dude. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, all I was laughing before because we were reminiscing about what you were saying to that audience, uh, and the first thing that you say, one of the very first things, like you, you said, like. I'm not going to lie, y'all. I'm feeling pretty sick right now. <laughs> and people, this is at peak of people being like, <laughs> should we even be here yeah. right now? Because it was the last show that we did. Yeah. And, uh, you know, all the comedians were dying in the green room listening <laughs> because it instantly dug you a hole for no reason. And then you got out of it, like, it by just with good jokes and stuff. I wouldn't say that. I just tried You're to tell them that I wasn't, wasn't actually ill. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I did feel bad. I literally, I physically felt bad. That's why I was saying that stuff. Oh, you felt bad back then? Yeah. Oh, you were feeling sick that? Yep. (laughs) Yep. And I still don't feel great. I have an ingrown toenail right now. Have you ever had an ingrown toenail? No. I I had one. Dude. My left foot. Before the podcast started, so... There may be a fly that flies across the screen at some point. We can't find it. It keeps going into hiding and then and then crossing frame. It got in Williams. Hold up your your shoe to the camera. It got in the holes in my crop. of his crop <laughs> <laughs> because it's. I like, should have crushed it. I didn't. You you think you should have the foresight to crush it with your hammer toe? Yeah. Do you still have hammer toe? Uh, no, it literally is just an ingrown toenail. All the oh. skin was falling off of my big toe on my left foot. Oh. Yep. Yep. Daddy like. Yeah. Yeah. You ever paint your toenails? No. Do you gauge? Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> can, can I just say something too? He played that joke on us in the green room before he even went out. It wasn't just with the audience he was he was messing with. It was us too because as soon as he walked in the green room, the first time we saw him, he was rolling up his sleeves and like wiping his face. He's like, "Are any of y'all feeling feverish?" 
<laughs> and I saw Joel's eyes just like widen. Oh yeah, because Joel, you know, yeah, he's always concerned about you know getting getting, getting sick. sick. Yeah, that anxiety. You know, <laughs> getting sick. <laughs> getting sick. Getting sick. There it is. The what? fly. The fly. There's two of them in here. Oh, son of a gun. Yeah, it's throwing me off already. It's all right. It's good to see you in person, buddy. I know you too. Yeah. You too. Yeah. But you know, negative for COVID. I got the antibodies. Positive for antibodies. That's good that what does that mean? You've I don't had know. it? That's the thing. I don't get it. I know. I wonder what that means. I don't understand it. Because I, I haven't had symptoms. Who knows? Hard to say. I hate all this. Right? Been reading the Bible a bunch. I'm trying to Why did that fly get on me when I started trying to talk about Jesus? What does that mean? What does that mean? You saw it. It's one of the plagues. <laughs> Ooh, well, it's right in front of me on the microphone. <laughs> what I, I mean, try to talk about the Bible and Jesus, and then this it's happens. It's on the mic. It's yep. on the mic. Dude, I got to say, it's... <laughs> I don't know if you're putting out an odor. Or I must be. It's hovering around me. God, that's a bad omen. <laughs> that's a bad omen. That really is. <laughs> what? Fly uh, swarming? Yeah. Ugh. God. In this day and age, that is a really bad omen. I don't think in this day and age, I think it's always been a bad omen because yeah. I think that it, <laughs> I think I it usually, I think historically, it means that death is coming. Yeah. Who's the Peanuts character with all the flies around him? What was his name? Uh, like Shoebox? Pigpen. 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 Dude, you are it's the- like Pigpen. You're the Pigpen of the Kill Tony crew. It's like Pigpen. Wow. Man, they are, yeah. It's, it's coming back. Welcome back to uh, Fly yeah. Watch. <laughs> fly Watch. With uh, Jeremiah and William. Um, Flywatch 2016. A lot of people are into watching birds these days. Um, Even the scooters. uh, They're very popular. But. Oh. Yeah. I was wondering if you were talking about an actual bird or the scooters. Nope. Both. What's going to happen with your voice with that with that setup? What do you mean? (laughs) Welcome back to Flywatch with William. On today's show, William has been kissed by the fly of death, kids. I have been kissed by a rose on the grave. Um, Do you remember that song by Seal? Do you remember that Seal song? It was in that Batman movie. I saw that Batman movie yesterday. You rewatched the Batman movie? Yeah. Batman Forever? Batman Forever. Yeah. Now that your rose is like it's a moon on the grave. I love that song. Oh. Whoa, William's been taking choir lessons in quarantine. I have. They're super expensive. How much are they? Are, do you do Zoom choir lessons? They're 150 a day. I do it five days a week. Five days a week. How long are the sessions? Uh, like four hours. Four hours? Yeah, it's a long session. That's Do- why it's 150 a day. Doesn't your voice get tuckered out? Yeah, God, it gets so tired. Hey, so what are you? What what uh, section of the choir are you? Uh, an alto. You're an alto? I'm an alto. What are you? I'm actually an alto. Are you really? Yeah, yeah. I was a boy. I was the uh, the only boy alto in my choir in uh, <laughs> in in grade school. Were you really? Yeah, I was the only alto boy. Oh god! And then and then even um, I did uh, this sketch show at Second City in L.A. where I had to <laughs> do some of the the female sections because yeah. the girls couldn't hit those <laughs> hit the notes, but I would I would tell them I would like be like no 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 try to match my voice in this range and then they would get it. Could they? They did eventually, but at first they're like, oh, I, I think what the it's too problem high. was. I don't know. Really what frustrating. Was their problem? What was their problem? What was the issue? I don't know. That's bullshit. Yeah. yeah. I should refer them to your madam. What's her name? Two Soads. 
Madame Tussauds Choir. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's actually a wax museum. Oh. I was goofing. That's what it was. <laughs> I miss our silly times together. I know. It's been a coon's age. Yeah. Um. Uh, lower your mic slightly, just so. Is that, that how can, I look right just now? Just so we can see your beautiful face. There it is. Look at me. Luckily, you can't see my thing, even look. though my <laughs> zipper's broken. <laughs> look at our look at our shorts game. Our shorts game is on point. <laughs> oh, the, now you drew the fly over to me. Yeah, Gage, how'd you do that? Is how'd this- you manage that? Can I have a thumbs up at least? <laughs> Oh, that wasn't even that funny. CG fly. It's when Gage adds flies into the attic. Add some flies swarming around. And then the kids William all down. <laughs> flies in the attic. And flies in William's beard. Flies, flies in the attic. Flies in the attic. Flies in the crocs. Flies in the bees. And flies on the docks. Welcome back to Fly Watch with William and Jeremiah. So nice uh, for y'all to be here today. We're actually uh, in the midst of two uh, uh, South American flies. Um, We don't see a lot of those up here. It's really cool. You can tell by uh, the structure of their legs, actually, that they are from South America. You can. That and the structure of their sombreros. Um. If you look closely, uh, is that what you, you're seeing? Is that what you're seeing? Yeah, I see a little small sombrero on huh. one of them. Okay, interesting. Just a really small, his green and orange. Green and orange. Oh, it's like a, uh, is that a flag that's draped? What is that? <laughs> Some flag. Huh. That's crazy. You don't normally see stuff like that. Gage, have you ever seen anything like that before? Hey, give him a thumbs up. Do you have Whoa, thumbs down? Thumbs down. What does that mean? Thumbs down. Thumbs down. Come on, dude. You've never seen a fly like that. You a thumbs down, (laughs) William. (laughs) William, (laughs) you are losing your mind. (laughs) This is your inner dialogue speaking. Uh, By the fly touching you, that is bad luck for the next seven days. How will I process this? I'm not sure. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, if it's bad luck for the next seven days, I'm not going to be able to go to dance class. I'm not going to be able to go to... How many classes are you enrolled? Okay. <laughs> How many classes I'm How many enrolled classes in? Three enrolled in? separate kinds. I do dance classes. They're like a hundred bucks a day. Wow. Yeah, you're, yeah, You're yeah. spending a lot of money a day. I am. I'm feeling... It seems like this comedy thing is starting to sort of fizzle out. I need to... Open up my horizons. I've started dancing. What's your favorite dance? There's dances such as like, you know, ballet is a genre. Salsa is a genre. Uh, There's also square dancing. There's ballroom dancing. Uh, It's a robot. You're getting classes taught? Robot dancing. On the robot dance? I've started robot dancing. Uh, I mean, I don't want to really want to put you on the spot. That's not really my MO, but... Could I see a little bit of, I think, you know, the listeners definitely want to listen to that. <laughs> and I think the viewers definitely want to see that. Could I, could I see a little? What do you mean? <laughs> I can't robot dance. <laughs> I wish I could. Could you robot dance? I like, I mean, it's not great, but I, I can, you know. You got to move sharply. I don't know how to do it. I like your idea of the robot dance is the, the robot's clearly talking while he's dancing. <laughs> And be like, I'm a robot. Hello. H- hello. Hello, Earthlings. Hello. Oh, man. Yeah, I wish I could. I've never been able to. Yeah. Never been able to. Never been able to. I hate it now. How, how are your parents doing? I love your parents. They're doing well. Good. Thanks for asking. Yeah, they're yeah. totally doing well. Yeah, they're good people. Yeah. Good. I know they like you. Well, we probably had similar upbringings. We probably did. Yeah. Did you have like Legos and stuff? <laughs> Did have Legos. I had Lincoln Logs as well. Love Lincoln Logs. I used to put army men in the Lincoln Logs and do a, a 
remote control car into the Lincoln Logs. I used to have a, a sandbox in the backyard where sometimes we would blow up the uh, little army men with firecrackers. Oh, nice. Yeah. Like an M90? Not as a, not as a kid. Yeah. More like black cats and stuff like Ooh, that. Ooh, I love black cats. Yeah. I love black cats. Hey, Gage, do you like black cats? <laughs> I like how there's he not a them. camera on Gage. <laughs> And William keeps like being like, eh, eh. <laughs> got the thumbs up. Black cats are loud. That's my one beef with them. <laughs> well, they are so loud. Is that? Wouldn't that just be beef with fireworks in general? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Black cats seem really loud. I mean, probably because the amount. Yeah, it's like a machine gun. Did you ever used to have those? Um, uh, they're not snails. What were they called? They would leave, they would stain the cement really bad. Those snakes? The slug? Slug, snakes. Oh no, the snake snakes. firework thing. The things. snake firework. It was cool for like 10 seconds, but then it stained the cement and then, you know, your parents oh, got upset. And then your uncle's mad. Yeah. God. Close relationship with your uncle? Yeah, you could say that. Yeah. You could say that. All living in Tennessee? Is that yeah. where all your family still in lives? In Memphis, yes. Yeah. Uncle Lance, love the man. Uh, we used to go down to their cabin in a, uh, outside of Oxford, Mississippi, and we'd get on the hay rides, and he would act like he was doing the tractor in the lake. <laughs> so much fun. What, did, what does that mean? What did, <laughs> he'd act like he was uh, going to drive the tractor into the lake. Like he acted like he was just going to straight on. Yeah, he'd look back and act like he was talking to people, and we'd all be screaming at him to look in front of him. <laughs> It was a classic gag. That's like a that that's like a great like dad joke. Bit. It was. You know what I mean? Like I might kill you. Ah, this is hilarious that we're gonna laugh about it later, right? I know, I know. And at the last second, he'd look in front of him and then turn the wheel real fast. I ran into a. Uh, I was at a, a summer camp once, and I ran a uh, an ATV, a four wheeler, directly yeah. into a, a fence, and it flipped <laughs> the four wheeler. And I'm lucky I didn't like. Did you get hurt? I I just scraped up my my leg real bad but like i'm glad i didn't like like lose something it like flipped entirely and the guy who's kill people yeah and i and the guy who who was teaching us basically it was my first time riding one and i didn't realize that you really have to lean your weight into it like when you're making those turns and i just kept going straight and i just kept like being like ah this thing's not (laughs) not turning then (laughs) pow and then the guy who owned the atv was like Checking on me to see if I was okay, but also really mad that I just wrecked his ATV sure. for no yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no offense. Was the ATV all right? I don't know. Was it a spend the night camp? Yep. You went to those? Yeah. Did you, Gage? Spend the night camps? He went once. Once. I never went. I only you went never to went? day camps. No. I'd get homesick. You get homesick that quickly where you're like, oh, yeah. I can't stay overnight. Oh, yeah. I never stayed at an overnight So you're camp. really close with your parents then? Yeah, I love my mom and my papa. And your siblings too, right? <laughs> and my two well, little well, brothers. Well, well, <laughs> I feel like that was, that was, uh, like you were transported back to like a different time, like a different time period. I was. When you said mama and papa. Mama and papa. Um, how often do you talk with uh, your mom or dad on the phone? I speak, I think, with my father more. We speak, uh, I don't know, three to four times a week, probably. That's good. Speak with my mom maybe once a week. Yeah? Yeah. Speak with her maybe once a week. I'm an everyday mom caller. Are you really? Yep. That's sweet. Yeah, That's I talk nice. to my mom every day. And then uh, my dad is more like... Every couple weeks, probably. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Did he teach you how to play pool? He did. I know. I think I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. That's fun. Yeah, I love. Yeah, I love playing pool. That's cool. You've been I've on never... the road. You've been on the road with us when, when we've. Uh... Yeah, I've watched y'all play. Yeah, you've kind of been wandered about. I'm with, totally with, wandering with, about with a tall boy. Totally. And tall boy and tote. Just talking to strangers. Yeah. Trying to see what's up. I miss interacting with random people. I know, me you too. You know what I mean? Me too. But I think that, you know, it eventually we'll get back to a place of 
I guess what a couple years. Okay, do you think it's a couple years? Two. I think it's two as well. My favorite part would be for the <laughs> listeners at home if Gage is not even here and, and William <laughs> just keeps having dialogue with somebody who's not there. That would be funny. And who the hell is that sitting back there? <laughs> who is that? Who is that? Devin. Dev Devin. He's Devlin? De- yeah, sure. Devlin. <laughs> Devlin? How did you go from Devin to Devlin so <laughs> fast? <laughs> Devlin. Devlin, he's a PA on the show. Okay. Yeah. He seems really nice. Do you have any questions? Hey, Devlin, will you fill William in? Uh Uh-huh. Devlin, what's that game you're playing? I see your fingers moving. Tamagotchi. No, hold on. Not talking. Whatever. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. Seriously. (laughs) Seriously? Hey. Those fingers moving. William, what's been pissing you off lately? Can we just get down to the nitty gritty? What's been pissing you off? Uh, I'm no longer working, no longer employed. Uh, if anybody watches this has a job, let me know. I need I need a job. I'm spending so much money on these classes. I don't know how I'm going to be able to keep going to all my classes. It's super expensive. The, the life I'm living these days, I'm buying tennis shoes on... The internet, I'm buying these bandana things I put around my head. Uh, they're super expensive. Basically, I have to, I need a job. Okay. I will put out good energy for you to Thank get you. a job. I don't mean to be pessimistic. But, <laughs> but if, what? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> but if people listen to this podcast or the Kill Tony podcast. Yeah. Time and time again. What are you about to say? <laughs> What are you about to say? It's been established that, you know, you have a little bit of alcoholic tendencies. Come on. What does that mean? And that you could maybe not be the best candidate for a job. For any job ever? So you're saying I'll never work again? Is that what you're telling me? Should I jump off a bridge right now? (sighs) I just, oh man! I just went really hard on you. I just wanted to. Yeah, see. you did. You're saying I can never get a job in my whole life. I'm 33. I hopefully have some more time on this earth. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> I'm just saying God. it's gonna take. <laughs> it's gonna take a person that doesn't know you to hire you. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> I hope not. Oh man, I'm, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Mm. Partially, yeah. I mean, how I need a job to stay out here. I know you're gonna get a job. Mm. I think you're. Why is get... my tummy moving this thing? Oh my goodness. Gage, why'd you set up this fucking microphone like this? It's hitting my gut. That's, the, that's it's awesome. hitting my baby. <laughs> I'm kidding. Does it look like I have a child, though? <laughs> I mean... Gage, does it? Kind of? Um, okay. I'll take that. I want to get into this next segment because <laughs> because there's a lot of questions that people had for you. I'm not even going to have time okay. to ask you all the questions okay. that people sent. Uh, but this next segment is called Fanning Out. Fanning Out. Questions from fans. Uh, that was kind of fun on my tummy. Everybody, this is Gage. I want to apologize Mm. for the mean riff that I just did. Yeah, I mean, literally, where's my confidence going to be when I'm applying to places? Oh, man. Well, let's get your confidence back up. I know. Let's get it up. Okay. You're a great person. Positive attitude. Uh, we'll say you're a hard worker. I haven't seen your, your, I am a hard worker. Okay. You're a hard worker. Um, uh, genuinely nice, kind, good with people. Bit of a close talker at times, which you have to keep in mind for these times right now. You can't do that. I know. I got to be careful. Be be cognizant of that. I love talking close to people's face. I know you do. As your friend for a while now, you've been doing it a while. 
Why do I do that? I think because it gets a reaction out of people inherently. Do you think? Yeah. I, I do. just like talking close to somebody's face. I mean, not everybody's into that, especially right now. I know. I thought you were about to say especially black people. Well, I'm sure they don't <laughs> like it just as much. Cage told me to say that. Yeah, it's on the teleprompter over there. Yep. Why'd you type that? Oh, God. <laughs> First question, which which goes with the belly thing that we were just talking about. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> In underscore case, underscore I'm underscore fake. On Twitter. <laughs> what did they say? Is William's belly hard? My grandpa had a similar looking belly. and It was real hard. <laughs> So grandpa, so we lived a while. <laughs> the question's not done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't drink the way William does. Come on. I'm looking for a job and now we're getting all this drinking stuff. <laughs> but he had the beat. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> but he had the beat is real bad though. Yeah. Do you want to? Touch it and tell, let him know what it feels like. Can, can you please poke William's belly and tell me how firm it is on a on a scale of one to ten? Feel this, and I'm not even gonna the I'm flex? not even gonna flex. Just okay. do it. It's so it's hard. so hard, isn't it? It's I'm not so even hard. flexing. It's so hard. I'm a, I'm shocked how I'm not firm. even in here. Let me flex. Hold okay. On. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's good. I used That's to work a, out. Yeah. I can I can feel the muscles on, underneath there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what happened? Why did my tummy get this way? <laughs> Seriously, why did my tummy get this way? I mean, it's got to be from the beer. It's, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm just telling you. I think that it could be from that. It the, could be. <sighs> hey, I want to I'm I'm right. I'm going in on you a little bit right now. <laughs> I'm going in on you a little bit right now, and I want to I want to address something. I'll get messages every once in a while. <laughs> what are they saying? They're saying, "Why don't you like William?" On Kill Tony, I'll get that. People will say, "Why don't you like William?" I actually love you, and if I'm ever, I making, know, I, I love being around. Yeah. If I ever, ma- if I'm ever making a face watching you, like that's not a pleasant face <laughs> on Kill Tony, it's literally because I'm studying you. And I'm looking at you like, what, what, what's next? If I'm, do you know what I mean? If I'm, if I'm doing one of these. Yeah. The thought never crosses my mind, but I, I have read seen, similar things. With you've that. read some stuff, right? It's People fun. have messaged me before and right. they're like, do you and Jeremiah have beef? We actually get along really well. Yeah. yeah for um, sure. So I wanted to address that because I just was going in on you a little hard for jokes purposes. No, but it scares me because there is truth to that. I mean, if I don't really change some things up, I'm not going to get another job. I'm g- not going to be able to pay for these classes. Well, you know, <sighs> part of it's joking. Part of it is. There's is, some real truth to it. There's a little, there's some hints of all comedy. There's some real truth. There's some real to truth. It. The only reason I even bring it up, because I have that stuff in my family, you know, I hear some you. of the drinking stuff. And I'm just looking out for you as a friend. I appreciate it. <laughs> what if he just popped open a beer right now? <laughs> I, <still Yeah>. don't. <laughs> I somehow don't have one right now. The last episode you polished off, it was a feat. <laughs> it was four or five Miller High Life Tall Boys. I in, remember. In, in the course of an episode. I remember. Oh, no. I shouldn't have said that. What happened? Oh, shit. Miller High Life, the champagne of beers. How could I forget? I wish I wouldn't have brought them up. How could I forget I don't that know. one? I don't know. Are you sponsored by anybody new right I now? I am. Who? Whom? Who, whom, are, whom are you sponsored by right now? Uh, Gage, type something out there. <laughs> I'm actually... Very curious to see what Gage is going to type now. S K Kratom. Oh, S-K what is Kratom? Kratom? That's a good. You people drink that or eat that or? Well, William, I'm glad <laughs> you asked. 
<laughs> now, if you're over the age of 18 and are not familiar with Kratom, listen up. Kratom is natural. It is the leaf of a tropical evergreen tree mainly found on the island of Borneo. For hundreds of years, it was used by the people of Indonesia. Workers in the rice fields would chew the leaves to help with energy and stamina through the day, similarly to how Americans drink coffee or energy drinks. Most Kratom consumers use Kratom as an alternative to dangerous and additive pharmaceuticals. Kratom has been scientifically proven to be safe. You know what else? What? SK Kratom is the best in the business. They have been a top Kratom supplier for over six years and traveled to even Indonesia numerous times to see how- Jeremiah, it's Indonesia. Indonesia. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. SK Kratom is best in the business. They have a, been a top Kratom supplier for six years and traveled to even Indonesia numerous times to see how and where their suppliers operate. They're able to weed out bad product and suppliers. SK put effort in so you are getting the best possible product. SK operates as a legitimate herbal supplement business with rigorous standards to ensure the consumer has the highest quality, safest product, including testing by third-party FDA consultants to prove the quality of SK Kratom. Do you have some with you now? I don't. I want to do some. Have y'all done some? But you know what? Go to soapcorner.com, that's with a K, and use promo code WONDERS30 for 30% off your first order of $35 or more. That's soapcorner.com and code WONDERS30 for 30% off. Soapcorner.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. This product is not for use by or sale to persons under the age of 18. This product should be used only as directed on the label. It should not be used if you're pregnant or nursing. Consult with a physician before use if you have serious medical condition or use prescription medications. A doctor's advice should be sought before using this and any supplemental dietary product. That last part's scary. Kratom. Kratom. <laughs> I've heard of it. So what? It's a stimulant. It sounds. I guess have so. Have you ever done it? I have never done it. But uh, what I, I will do. Some I, what I will do. Well, um, I'll ask for some product. I'm going to give you some, and then also, I'm going to Venmo you a little bit of money because you did part of that ad read. <laughs> that's the, that's the right thing to do. Well, you're very sweet. Right yeah, I wonder what it's like. Well, have you done it? You, do you, you like have? Page? Are you on it right now? No, not right now, but I've done it before. I used to I used to have a lot of that. I used to do it a lot. Would you sell it to people? No, you get it from like places like that. Like GNC? Soap Corner, was that with a K you said? Yeah, Soap Corner with a K. Dot com. Wonders 30, 30% off. Kratom. I've totally heard of it. I'd be interested to do it. Would you chew it or drink it or? You drink it or take it in pill form. But the but drinking it's a little bit a little bit hard. What do you mean? It tastes a certain kind of way? Yeah, I mean it's like a it's a plant. You're drinking like a plant. So it's like if you if you like the taste, if you're cool with that, that's how I would do it because I didn't care. I it was an acquired thing that I had. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Most people take little pills. Nice. 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 I'm gonna try some. G'day there. My name is James Nolan. But you can call me Tibby. Welcome to Tibby's Animal Corner. Our very special guest today is actually a cow. Please welcome, without further ado, a cow. Come on in there. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Sit right over here. So nice to be here. Wow. It's so nice to be here. I've never been to Australia before. What's your name? What's your name, love? Uh, Richard Martinez. Richard Martinez. Now, what? Where exactly are you from, Richard? Uh, St. Louis. St. Louis, as in Missouri. Yes, Missouri. Head of it. Head of it. It is so nice to be here. Well, now I, I have to admit, I've never truly had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a bovine like yourself before. Some people call them bovine. Some people call them cows. Some people even call them bison in different territories. Very dependent on where you're from. But yeah. This is fascinating right now. You have an actual cow in the studio on Tibby's Animal Corner. 
so excited to be here. It took me forever on the plane. I am jet lag like a motherfucker right now. Wow. And, and, and I do see uh, that you actually have others. So you are actually a female cow. Tibby's correct. Um, these are udders. I TT out of these things. Normally it's milk that comes out. I tend to TT out of them. Why are you saying you piss out of your udders? Correct. I, I TT out of these things. I actually go to the, uh, the, the male restroom. Even though I am a female cow, I go to the male restroom. Well, let's talk about that. Now, out in the public, isn't everywhere kind of just male and female like it doesn't really matter like it's undesignated territory not in st louis that's it's not like, in st louis we're behind the times over there really like farms and stuff like that they actually separate whether the males and the females should pee or not bathroom. in different really oh yeah 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 i mean i gotta get down on all fours i gotta Put these udders in the urinal. Super embarrassing if I'm at, like at a party or something. It keeps kind of going erect, and then it keeps falling back a little bit, right? It does. It does. Wow. Uh. But that one's pretty <laughs> pecky over there. It is very brecky. Pecky. Oh, pecky. Pecky. It's very pecky. Pecky. It's real pecky. The word is pecky. Pecky. Pokey. I'm not saying pokey. It I'm saying is pecky. really pecky. All right, oh, well, perky. Are you making fun of the way I talk? No, 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 no. Perky. Okay, I got it. I got it. I get it. I didn't understand what you were saying at first. It's Cause, perky. Because I eat beggars all the time. Yeah, I bet you eat fucking yeah, burgers eat, all the time. I eat burgers, yeah. I eat what burgers. are you even talking about? I'm saying that I eat your You're family. making fun of my fucking dance? I'm, yeah. And then you're saying perky? Yeah. Yeah. Some, Come on. Sometimes I eat 100% grass-fed burgers. No, you don't. Yes, I do. And guess what? Why'd per you get me on this show then? Probably one of them's your cousin. Yeah. yeah, it probably is. I'm an animal lover, but I'm also a lover of good food. Why'd you get me on this thing? Because I thought it was going to be an interesting interview. What's he talking you about? You started snapping at me as a cow. I've been having a hard week, and then well, this happens. Me. Okay, so tell me about this hard week that you've been having. I've been having a really hard week, okay, and then you tell do me this to me. Okay, what did I do to you? What did I do, Richard I've Martinez? I've had a hell of a week. Tell me about your week. Both of my parents died. This is not the best time for us. It's sponsor. not the best time, right. Uh, we are sponsored. You want to tell them? By Outback Steakhouse. Outback Steakhouse, where families come to die. It is a good time. I love Outback Steakhouse. Do you know what they serve there? Bloomin' Onions. Do you know what else they serve there? No. What? I don't know how to tell you this, but they serve your people there. My people. What's going on? Was this a trap? Listen, you're in. Was a, this a trap? You bringing me here? You're in a safe place. What happened with your mother and your father? <laughs> mm, we went to uh, uh, the Grand Canyon. My dad got too close to the edge. He fell off. My mom was tied to him. She was. Brought off the cliff as well. <laughs> oh no. I've seen this before. In the wild. It's something called Mads Cow Disease. Yeah, I'm sick. You have to proceed with very much caution. When interacting with a cow with Mads cow disease. Do you? I do. I do know this. <laughs> but the good thing about you is you won't be used for food. Because your brain's bad. 
And that affects the rest of okay. the meat in your body. So that is a positive with Mads cow disease. Okay. Well, that's good to know. But you might be shot in the head with a gun. Mm. Mm. It's hard. It's bad. I can see that. It's a hard life. It's hot as shit in this. I'm always hot. It's awful. <laughs> you, I'm you, sweating. You're hot. This at, fucking thing. You're hot in your own skin. I get that. Yeah, it's hot as shit. I'm sweating out of my armpits. You're a sad cow, aren't you? I misdiagnosed you altogether. Yeah. You're not I mean, a mad cow. Is, yeah, I'm a sad cow. You're a sad cow. You got sad cow's disease. Yeah, I do. I've had it a couple and years And I'm not going to lie. It's hard to have a conversation with sad cows. <laughs> when a cow's not positive, chewing grass, looking at you, just sad, looking at you in the eye, knowing there's about to be put out of its misery. Yeah, it's sad. It is sad. Ugh. Well, that's all the time we have today. <laughs> it's true. It was nice talking to you, Tibby. It was nice talking to you, Richard Martinez. And this has been Tibby's Animal Corner, and I hope to see you very soon. Um, this is from the young, young human on uh, Twitter. Can you remind the fans what your favorite flavor of soap was from back in the day when you had to finally address this addiction? Uh, the orange dial, the bar of orange dial. The bar? Bar of orange dial. You used to suck on it? Uh, yeah, my mom made me. Oh, yep. to, for disciplinary. Yep. Well, do you remember a time specifically why you got the bar of soap? I set up a trap. Uh, it was like this rope or string or something. I set it up outside of my parents' bedroom, and I call my brother Vance in, and he comes running in all excited, and he breaks his arm because he fe he literally fell for my trap. And uh, I got a, a hefty dose of dial bar soap that evening. <laughs> so you home alone your brother? I home alone his fucking ass. Uh, and did you, <laughs> but I got, yeah. I did you actually soap. start liking the soap just because you were getting in trouble so much that you're like, Oh, I like this. Correct. I've never really considered it, but I think that's probably, that makes sense. So then therefore, did you start acting out as a means to get that to soap? Get the soap? Yes, I did. It was like this nightmarish, just vicious cycle. I was doing bad. God, going down the driveway and like this little cart thing and cars would barely miss me when I went into the road and just throwing toilet paper and people's trees. And did you do that in high school or grade school? A lot of that. I would. Well, whose house? Was it somebody at whose school from school that you knew specifically or was it just a stranger? It was a guy, Russell Neenan. I'd always go after his ass. Why Russell? I don't know. He had it coming to him. We were on baseball teams growing up mm. and his head was really big. So he had to get a special helmet that adjusted to his head. And none of the rest of us boys on uh, Coach Mari's uh, yellow Pirates baseball team, we we would have to wear his helmet and it'd flop around. And if you hit a good baseball or something, your helmet looked all stupid. That's why, that's why I went after him. That's why I went after his ass. I he have had to, it coming. I have to ask. You said he had it coming. Yeah, he had it coming. <laughs> Was he a special ed kid? No, He's... he actually ended up playing for uh, like Wake Forest or something. He played football. Because you said his head was so big, he had it to have a special huge. helmet. It was huge. He was always a big boy. So he had it coming. Was yes. he a mean kid to you? No, we got along. We got along. But why then the toilet paper at his house, like that kid? Just because I promise you, I was hitting some pretty good baseballs and I would be running around the diamond and the helmet would be way too big for my head and it'd be flopping around. So you had to share the helmet with him? Yes, yes. Why you specifically? Something about my hair color. 
All right. I wasn't allowed to wear the other ones. So. You know, this is turning into, we haven't had one of these in a long time. This is turning into a pretty interesting therapy session today. It is. It seems like it is. It's interesting. Um, at, Don, at Donut Felon, there you go, uh, on Twitter, ask William if his dad is, st- uh, is starting doing open mics in Memphis. He's not. I don't think any of those are happening right now, but he's not. He still calls me and sends me jokes, though. My dad pitches me jokes, too. Does he? He'll pitch it's me fun. jokes or, I like it. or screenplay ideas. He'll be like, <laughs> all right, son, I got this story for you. That's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll pitch me that. That's funny. Uh, this is from at ChewyHuey467 on Twitter. We always see his best set. Where was your worst set? Uh, when I lived in Denver, Colorado, I remember doing a set right up in Cheyenne, Wyoming with two other Denver people. And it was like this really crowded bar and I thought it'd be really good. And I was doing 10 minutes and I can't even remember exactly what I said, but right off the bat, nobody was laughing. Some girl in the back yells out, you suck. Everybody starts laughing. It was horrible. Yeah, any, it was horrible. And I had to keep going. Crowd, it was awful. Anytime the crowd sides with the heckler, it that's was bad. Rough. Yeah, yeah. And I remember later on that night, I went back to the restaurant where I was working in Denver. It's called Metal Art Kitchen, and I was teaching in the bathroom. And in the process of me teaching, my penis goes back into my into my zipper and my pants and I TT'd all over my leg. So it's a real icing on the cake for a horrible night. <laughs> it was bad. And I stayed at the bar walking around with the TT on the front of my pants. Did anybody comment on it? I don't know. I didn't give a fuck. Oh. I didn't give a shit wow. anymore. There's there's inner rage, I feel. Yeah, I didn't give a shit anymore. Well, sometimes you need to tap into that. I know. I know. That rage, William. I know. Sometimes I see the fire in your eye. It happens sometimes. Then you snap? Yep. And what happens? I uh, find myself with the pilot of that Malaysian air flight that no one ever found, but I just picture me being in the cockpit with him, and we fly up way too high and kill everybody and the main part of the airplane and just... Little cutscene of me and him walking around the aisles, just filled with car- carcasses everywhere. Just walking on that plane, just by ourselves, just flying into the to the sunrise. So, in this fantasy, everybody else is dead except you and the correct. Pilot. We fly up way too high. The oxygen masks but, come down, but, but there's only so much oxygen. Right. So we stay up real high for I don't know thirty minutes, and the rest is history. Uh, our buddy Josh Wolf at Josh Wolf Comedy on Instagram asks, and this got a lot of likes. What does your belly button smell like? Do you want to give it a little smell and let him know? When is he going to get me on his show again? I've been meaning to talk to that guy, Josh Wolf. Yeah, when am I going to get on his show again? Control I was chaos? a little character a couple times, uh-huh. and I haven't been anymore. Okay, well, we need to talk to that guy. Okay, we can we can talk to him. I mean, Gage and I both know him real well. Yeah, let's talk to him. I got a pair of shoes one time on that one. Yeah. A pair of Pumas. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm probably going to regret this. I want you to twist your finger around in your belly button. But first, My hands are sweaty. First, so mo- to- first uh, yeah, yeah. Is your belly button moist, first of all? Is your belly button moist? Does it look like it's moist? It looks like it's always moist. Oh, my. look at that! <laughs> that oh, look at that! It looks like the bottom of a cinnamon toast crunch bowl, like after, like the remnants, like after you've already <laughs> drank the 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 milk. I've never thought of it that way. <laughs> Because it's got a little bit of cinnamon, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so. Do my finger in it? Yeah. This is where I ate from my mama. (laughs) 
This is where A for my mama. <laughs> That's what it is, a belly button. I know. Did you know that one, Gage? You ate, we eat from these when we're little, little babies. <laughs> oh I don't think it's going to smell like anything. You want to spell it though? <laughs> uh, yeah. Just le- don't move okay. it. Just leave it. Oh, God. This mic setup is falling. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Let's give it up for Gage. Put it. Put it. Look, the fly's back. The fly's on my that head. Is not a good time. <laughs> that is not a good time. Whoa! At all. Before I've even that's smelled a little it. crazy. That's that is crazy. a little crazy. It went right for the finger. That is a little crazy, and it's right in front of me. All right, put it. It smells like cigarettes, but it might just be your finger. Stop. My parents don't realize I'm still smoking. Oh, William. Uh, yeah, it doesn't smell like anything. It didn't smell Does like, it? It doesn't really smell like it's anything. It's clean. I take showers. How many showers a day do you take? Uh, all Usually one if it's really... Oh, yeah, his fingers for sure. Yep. Mm, thank you. Yeah, lather that up there. Yeah, How many good. showers do you take? Uh, one a day. If it's really hot out or I need a pick-me-up, then I'll do a, a, a second shower, like a cold nice. rinse. Yeah. Is this how you r- rub in the stuff where you get your whole hand like that? Yeah, you're doing it great. I mean, that fly <laughs> loves you, though. <laughs> wonder where the other one is. God, it got on my hand. Look, there's shit on my shirt now. How did that happen? Do you see that? I don't think it's going to show up on camera. Is that your skin? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just going to wear this all day today. <laughs> oh, this is a mean question. I, I don't. Perfect. Let's hear it. No, I don't. Th- okay. I don't, well, then. I don't want. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to hear it either. <laughs> but say it. Well, it's not. I think it's just discrediting your writing process. What okay, I'll just ask whatever. what I'll just ask what the, your writing process is. This is from Chloe B. Hester. Because if oh, I read the whole Chloe thing, Chloe talking the shit. Fucking Chloe Hester. What do you do, you stupid bitch? Well, okay. What's your job, you stupid bitch? <laughs> I mean, um, hey, are you hiring at your job? <laughs> yeah, Chloe Hester. Can I work at your Log John Silvers, you dumb bitch? Um. <laughs> Or to get your fast food shrimp place. Um, <laughs> What's your writing I don't know. Like? I'll just keep a pen on me and a piece of paper and then... Uh, uh, I'll write the stuff down. You write it down. Okay. Yeah, I was wrote, wrote a couple things. Oh, okay. So I, you always have like no cards on you ready to go just in case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there's nothing really. So I've always noticed that it's always very small. Yeah, how do you always re- very small how do you writing. read your writing that small? I have great penmanship. Or really good eyesight, too. Yeah, I think my eyesight's all right. I've never worn glasses. I wouldn't be against it, but I've never had to wear glasses. Yeah, I have contacts. I gotta my you do? my vision's real bad. I went on a on a walk last night. I don't know why I did this. I went on a walk with uh glasses uh which i usually don't wear out in public but i just my eyes were bugging me from looking at a screen too much i was like doing a lot of video editing yesterday yeah. and uh when i was walking my glasses started fogging up a little bit so i was like you know what let me just walk around with no vision for a while and it was trippy it was it's re- hard to see everything Everything was blurred and I'm walking and I've never done this before walking around in public with no vision. It's actually like a nightmare that I've had before where like a zombie apocalypse happens or something. And then like, I don't have contacts or anything and there's like craziness going on around me. It's like end of the world or I'm, I've had the dream a lot where I 
can't see, like my vision's really blurred while I have to drive and get a family member to a hospital or something. It's just like weird. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, I have him where I'm on a, uh, an elevator and the elevator collapses. Uh, or where the, or where the plane crashes. Do you have a lot of those? Some. I had a dream where I was, uh, eating, uh, uh, toen- toenails recently. <laughs> was- I met Beck the other night in my dream two nights ago. Did you? What's he like? Met Beck. He seemed really nice. Seemed like a good dude, right? I wanted to bring up the Scientology thing. I didn't, but yeah, he seemed really nice. It was like in a comedy thing or something. And I'm a giant Beck fan, so it was really cool to meet Beck two nights ago. Dude, I had a, I've had, I used to have dreams a lot back in the day, uh, where I would be hanging out backstage or in an alleyway riffing with, uh, Adam Sandler, David Spade, and Chris Farley. Oh my gosh, that's to, fun. I, that's that a used good to dream. be like a recurring dream that I used to have. Yeah, that's yeah. a fun one. <laughs> um, <laughs> fun. I know it. This is a, just a <laughs> this is just a posi- positive vibes. Okay. Kalua ninety two one to to send you on Instagram. Not really a question, but I just want to say I want William to be successful. How nice well, is that? Sweet from Kalua. Kalua, really sweet. Thanks, Kalua. Parks and Rec on Instagram. What do Larry and Francis think of William's girlfriend? Uh, they've never they talked to her on the phone. They've never met her in person. Uh, so I think it's sort of hard to tell if you've never met the person in person. Sure. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, Ryan... Mantha official going on this dreams talk that we're talking about. William is always describing moments as a nightmare, but can William describe his worst nightmare? Do you have a dream that you had that was like really, really rough? I used to have a recurring one when I was a little boy where I would wake up screaming and crying. My parents would have to come in my bedroom. And I remember I would pray at night to Jesus for me not to have the nightmare, but I would have it all the time. I was a little fish down in the ocean around a bunch of other little fish. And a big old fish would swim up in the darkness and it would have bandages all over it. And I remember thinking it looked like a mummy fish. So I would call it a mummy fish in my head and all the other, it would open up its mouth and all the other fish would swim away and it would, it would just be me there and it would swallow me. Do you think scared me to death? Do you think that because we both grew up like, uh, in biblical households that, that, uh, the story of Jonah and, and the whale kind of infiltrated your mind Could a little bit? Could be. I don't know. I hear what you're saying. And maybe, I don't know. Mi- maybe mixed with a little Lazarus with some, some bandages? Could be. Just, Hard to say. It scared know, me to death, though. I mean, I had a recurring dream when I was a little kid where, and I was real little when I had this dream, uh, I would dream that there would be literally like monsters or zombies like coming out of the ground in our backyard yeah. and, and my childhood home. And if they touched you, you turn into a monster. Ugh. And uh, I, the end of every dream, uh, my mom would be trying to protect me, but then she would turn into a monster. And that's when I would wake up is when my mom was a monster. That's scary. Real scary, dude. What are dreams? We still don't really know. What are they? I don't know why. Like, it's something that I think we don't really know much about them as far as like science goes and stuff. Like, it's just like our brain just keeps going. I have them all the, the time. The rest of our body rests. I've been having bad ones recently. Yeah. I've had. Yeah, a, I don't know why. I've been maybe because I've on edge a little or something because of the job. I don't know, but I've been having bad dreams. I've recently. had a recurring uh, dream in different settings that uh, I've, uh, once I returned to stand up, that I've forgotten how to do it entirely. I have dreams like that. And I, and I, feel horrible on stage and then I wake up I'm like Ugh. yeah I wake up sometimes and I'm just relieved that's not actually my reality yeah. I'll totally have them with stand up where like I forget everything or I don't have my notebook or something mm-hmm. and it's not a good feeling no man I had this one dream uh my beloved now deceased grandmother B Vance I, it was a very vivid dream and I'm talking to her and out of nowhere she tells me William I'm in hell it's not that bad but it's pretty bad and I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, that's a horrible dream. And then I had a dream maybe a month later where I'm in the uh, a suburban with my cousin Taylor, who's really low key, but he's being very forceful that evening. And my mom and her sister, and uh, we end up making it to a building with a big crystal on top of it. And we open up the doors, and it's this black person church. 
and I look in there and B's dancing with all the black people and I go dance with B and I woke up crying. I feel like it was B telling me, William, I'm actually not in hell. I don't know why I told you I was in hell in the first dream. Weird. Yeah. Yep. (laughs) I woke up crying. It was intense. I'll I'll wake up crying from dreams occasionally. Every now and again. Yeah. It doesn't happen often. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um. This is from John Diablo, uh, and then we'll wrap up uh, here in a second. Um, can we get some background on your past cycling life? Why, when, and how did you make? Uh, how did it make you feel? And how does that compare to your life now with comedy in LA, et cetera? Because you used to cycle a lot, right? I did. I was a state champion at one point. Wow. I used to shave my legs. Really? I used to do junior Olympic training camps. Yeah, it was great. I'm always my happiest when I'm biking, so it's weird that I'm not, I don't bike now because I know I'm always at my happiest when I'm bicycling a lot. Do you have a bike out here? I got two. But you don't use them? I haven't been using them. How come? I don't know. There's no reason. I need to. Let's go on a, you have two? I'm self-sabotaging that I'm not doing it. You have two? I'll go on a bike ride with you. I don't have a bike. I'll go on a bike ride with you. Yeah. Well, we should. I totally have two bikes and I have like a little trainer thing where I could ride up in my bedroom just in place. I need to. It's I'm, dumb. Dude, I'm serious. I went on a bike ride when I went back to Kansas City uh, with my dad and my wife, and it was so fun. It was, like, I really, really good. I love it. Well, I'm down, dude. If you if if you have if you have two bikes, I'm down to... One is a fixed gear, so it only... Ha- or a single speed, so it doesn't... It wouldn't be as fun to ride, but you could you could ride it. Yeah? Okay. Oh, yeah. Cool. Maybe we should do it. Um, Mary E. Tack... Ask him about the chosen hands. I sort of don't know how Mary Etag knows about the chosen hands. Well, um, then that makes it an even that's more interesting. So weird. It, it makes it Mary a more interesting. Mary Etag asked about the chosen hands. Yeah. What does that mean? The chosen hands. Oh my gosh. I used to play this game called Hi Ho Cheerio a bunch when I was uh a little guy, and that's one of the games where I would cheat some and I'd have to get the soap in my mouth and everything, but Basically, my brother Vance would say I had the chosen hands because I was able to flick the the spinner in such a way where I was able to get my fill up my cherry tree really quick and win the game a bunch. How did this person know this? That is, do you know this person? <laughs> have you said that? Have you said that on another podcast? You had to have, right? That's so. That's that's so specific. That's scary. I've never told anybody about that. Wait. (laughs) What? I've never told anybody about that one. Uh, I don't like that. William, what are you saying right now? Yeah, I don't get this. I don't like that. That's a little scary. How did she know about this? Mary Etak, how did you know about the chosen hands? How did you know, bitch? All right, yeah, we can call it that, I guess. <laughs> no, yeah, super weird. I don't know. <laughs> super. Last weird. question at Gerber Sean: Has William never really shaved his pubes? Correct. Do you shave your pubes? Um, yeah, actually, um, if you, you go use to use that company, right? If you go to manscaped.com. <laughs> <laughs> you can get 20% off with promo code SAX. That's S-A-X. Yeah, I uh, I actually manscaped my butthole uh, recently, and I kind of wish I wouldn't have because uh, now it's grown back in, and it's a little Thicker. uncomfortable. Oh, it's oh, growing back on. It's just prickly now. Are you kidding? No, I did that. Why did you do your butthole? <laughs> because there's hair back there. Who's seeing your butthole? Uh, it's more just like, oh, well, this is getting real gross now. When what you- color is it? Pink? <laughs> Is it pink? I don't know. Mine's pink. Is yours pink? Gage? (laughs) I don't think. (laughs) Mine's a nice little pink color. What's yours? I think mine's tan. You really shaved it. Yeah. It's almost unbelievable. Why? How long ago? I didn't shave it like with a fine razor. I did it with the Manscaped little buzzer thing. Was it hard? 
It was super easy. No, that, that's why. That's why I was cleaning everything else up and I was like, yeah, maybe I'll give this a shot. And I just kept going and it just kept going and it just kept going. And how then meanwhile, all of a sudden lodged up in my colon. I don't know how I got up there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, the, the, the pubic area feels much better trimmed down. Does it, it makes you feel, I don't know. It makes you feel, well, it makes me feel more attractive. Does it? So I feel like with me, it I don't know why me... I just said that out loud, but that's a that's a real thought. <laughs> that's a real thought. It's like my wife is the only person who sees it, but like, <laughs> but well, when that's but, sweet. But when I did when I did it, whenever I cleaned it up down there, I'm like, oh, this looks better than before because I've let it yeah. go. I have infamously very big bush. Mine quits growing though. It's not, I've never touched it, but it's not like it's crazy. Do you have red pubes? Yeah, I have red pubes. It's yeah, special. I, I, See, if I shave mine, I feel like it would, and if somebody William, saw it, it would make me look like a little boy or well, something. Well, stand up and show, show me your, my penis. Sh- no, no, <laughs> show me your show pubes. Penis show me just head. the show me just the tops of the pubes. I'll sit down and do it. I'm not standing up. I mean, okay, just I guess I was just gonna do it stand up so it wouldn't show up on camera. It's gonna show up on camera if you do it. Here, let's just do just it. face okay. him. Just face me. Oh, that's bright red. Yeah, it's bright red. That's what the, color do you think it'd be? I'm actually, that's the same color as your beard. Yeah. It looks like my beard. I thought that was an old wives' tale. <laughs> About redheads having like the exact color. It's the exact color. What color are yours? Your color of your eyebrows? Yeah, you probably. a dusty blonde. You want to see it? Yeah, it's like dusty blonde. Yeah, let's see it. All right. For showing. And then Gage, you're next. Get your thing ready. It's kind of like. They're kind of more trimmed down now because I just manscaped. Let's see. <laughs> oh, nice. They are sort of trimmed. Yeah, they're pretty trimmed right now. Whoa. Yeah. When did you trim? How long ago was that? That was weeks ago. It was? Yeah, they were there. It was even more of a buzz cut before that. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I under honestly, if I had your pubes, I wouldn't shave them either. It's my best feature. I mean, <laughs> it's my best feature. Why would I? Why this would I shave them? This isn't even close to the first time that we've shown pubes. <laughs> People have shown their pubes to each other on the show. It is I my best it's feature. The third I mean, time I, at least it's a recurring thing. Uh, Stevie Weeby. Um, who else? Mainly Stevie Weeby. That's a recurring one. So that's all, funny. Why was he showing his pubes? Well, we did this thing. We're the Scissor Brothers. We ended up cutting each other's pubes on the show. It was a whole thing with scissors. Scissor Brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a whole thing. That's fun sounding. But I, what I'll say, if I had bright red pubes, yeah. I probably wouldn't cut them either. Yeah, right, right, right. Let's wrap up okay. with sax talk. Oh, sax. Uh, this was probably, I don't know, 15 years ago. I was at the uh, Admiral Benbow Inn off of Summer Avenue in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, the night before, it was the first time I had seen both of my brothers naked. Also, at the time, I was actually working at the Admiral Benbow Inn. It was just a really nice hotel off of Summer Avenue in Memphis, Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, Well, push came to shove, and I found myself with a uh, Hispanic lady in one of the hotel rooms one evening. We slowly walk up the stairs. I I slam the door behind us. I tell uh, the bitch to take her clothes off. <laughs> well, I start laughing. <laughs> Basically, uh, she's naked on the bed. I have a, a gun pointed at her head. <laughs> Stupid. Gage, why are you typing this shit for me to say, dude? 
No, but yeah, we ended up uh, consummating our relationship that night. It was really nice. Uh, I I woke up the day the the next day she was gone. Uh, and all I could think to myself was, I caramba, where did this bitch go? She's gonna tell the police about me. I actually bought a newspaper that day, and I saw her uh, picture on the front of the newspaper. It said she had died the night before. Uh, that night I was on a bunch of Xanax and Hennessy. Uh, I guess I blacked out. Basically, I ended up shooting her up in that hotel room. Uh, yeah, just a really, really fun time. <laughs> yeah, really fun time. <laughs> this is t- Wow, man. <laughs> Crazy times. I was really living it up uh, back in Memphis. Wild times. It was. I forget if I've asked you this. I think I have before. Huh. You like Hattie B's? Chicken? Yeah. Is that out here? Hot chicken? No, it's in Tennessee. I've never had it. I've totally heard of it, but I've never had it. I like Gus's. Where? I know there's a Gus's out here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I haven't been to the one out here, but the one in Memphis, I think, is where it started. I love it. I yeah. think it's delicious. Okay. Well... We should go to Hattie B's if we're ever in Tennessee at the same time. I know. I agree. I'd mm-hmm. love to. Let me open up for you sometime or something. Let's do it. Let's do it. That'd be awesome. And be careful in Kentucky. People are, might be sick. Just well, be careful. I'll be careful. Okay. All right. I well, love you, dude. Thanks for doing this podcast. Love you too. Yeah. Thank you for having me on. It was All, fun. Always fun. You know, literally, fun. people have been asking for your return for a long time, so I'm glad we were able to make this happen today. I know. Me too. You're nice to ask me. Thank you. Yeah, we'll do it again. Let's do it.